All right, people, here is the deck profile for the Electromagnetic Warrior. So this deck was pretty fun, you know? Uh, is it a great deck for what you see right now? Probably not. It looks really, really dumb and tacky and completely devoted to one, trying to do one thing. But you know what? That one thing is so good. So good. I mean, all I have to do is just fuse Valkyrion into Perizion, and I get a Quasar. I get a 4,000 attack, 4,000 defense, monster that during either player's turn can act negate the activation of a spell, trap, or monster effect. And if I happen to leave the card because of a card effect, I get to summon both of them from my deck, hand or deck. You know, that actually happened in one of the duels. I'm not sure if you saw it, but uh, my opponent had a set monster and a piece of back row, right? I summon out my uh, Imperial Magnum, big old condom, right? Attacking to your monster, it happened to be, I think it was like a death frog or the one that searches when it goes to the graveyard. I'm like, no, you're playing frogs. I don't want to do a tree toad. I already have my own monster to get. I don't need you to get yours, so I'm it. He decided to warning my magnum. Okay, I left the field because of the card effect. Therefore, I get to summon these two for my deck. So 8,000 minus the 15 for solemn, solemn strike, right, is 6,500. Minus 35, minus 3,000 game. Like, that's exactly how it went down. It was kind of funny. So, uh, I mean, it's coming in the structure deck, and, you know, everybody's on that ABC hype, and we did play ABCs previously. Uh, I mean, this this deck is nothing to scoff at either, especially since you could just go on my buy three of these structure decks, slap them together, throw in a couple of polys and stuff like that, and go to town. So, overall, not bad. So, let's get into the deck profile. So, we run three Valkyrion, and just Valkyrion. Like, I get it, you're probably, you know, you're supposed to like fuse the decks together, you're supposed to put the Alpha and the Beta and the Gamma from the original Magma Warriors with the Electromag Warriors and fuse them together and then summon both, no, 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 we're just running Valkyrion just so we can poly into this, that's it, we don't, we don't need the other three, like, they don't even really have any synergy, they're, they're level four, these guys are level three, like, no, you know, and they're, I think they're all normal monsters, I think they're all normal monsters, so, no, no, so, uh, sorry, uh, classic Yugi plays, but no. The only the way you're getting summoned is if my big old condom got removed from the, uh, from the field by a card effect. That's the only way that you're get you're hitting the field. Outside of that, you're just not worth the trouble. You know, you're just 3,500 attack, 3,850. I mean, that defense is ridiculous. But, you know, if this is what I got to do to get you on the field, just tribute them while they're on the field, nah. Then we got the better one, similar to uh, how uh, XYZ and the ABC in comparison, we have... Rizion, the Electromagnetic Warrior. So, it's a little bit easier to summon. Stats on is high, only 3,000 attack and 2,800 defense, so a little bit lower, but still over the attack barrier. And he actually has uh, an effect besides just, uh, you know, tribute him off and some of the other ones in the graveyard. Like, eh, no. And, you know, I can't even do this during either player's turn either, you know, like uh, how uh, ABC can hop out of the way and separate during my opponent's turn. Like, nope. So, uh, summon it from my hand by banishing. Uh, the electromagnetic alpha, beta, and gamma from my hand field or graveyard. Much easier, right? It's kind of like ABC and the XYZ comparison. But it also has an effect that I can banish one level four lower magnet warrior. So see how it's like level four lower and then not electromagnet warrior, just magnet warrior. So if I am running the other ones, I can do this effect to target a card uh, my opponent controls and pop it. So it's not like during either player's turn, uh, similar to ABC, but ABC goes from the hand, which is technically a neg. This is just a monster in my graveyard. I mean, graveyard is not technically a resource, so I would just go one up on my opponent. I would stay even with resources while destroying one of my opponent's cards. So overall, not bad. The, the effect is fine. I don't think I used it too many times, but still good. And this card destroyed by battle or in my possession is destroyed by card effect, then I can go ahead and I believe summon the rest of them. Target the electronic alpha, beta, and gamma among your banished monsters and special summon them. So pretty much just to summon him, then get three turns of you know, well, yeah, I'm banished on summon. And then when he die, when he dies, I when he's just destroyed, I go ahead and get them back and then I can go ahead and freeze again. So you know, similar to ABC, it's pretty powerful, but uh it's not really the focus of the deck. It, it's mostly getting out <laughs> Gorgon Guardian and summoning my giant Magnum Condom. Simple as that. All right, let's actually get into the monsters. So we run three Alpha. Alpha, when he's normal summoner special summon, I get to add a level eight uh, Magna Warrior. These two. Search these two, fuse it up. Simple as that, you know. Uh, his attack is pretty decent, 1700. Uh, and then during my opponent's turn, I can trip this card, special summon one level four Magna Warrior from my deck. That's a quick effect. I don't think that, uh, that I ever used that effect. I don't think it ever went off or anything like that. 
During your opponent's turn, you contribute this card, especially someone when level four. Oh, the level four. That explains it. That explains why I never use it. I'm not running the level fours. <laughs> like I was like, I was like, how come I never like, you know, went into him and to him and to him? Like, oh, that'd be great. Like, no 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 no. No. Level four magnet warrior. I'm not running any. Like those are the OG monsters. They're level four. And that's why it says magnet warrior. So no. So won't be getting that effect. I'm assuming they all said that. I never noticed it because I've never done it. So uh then we have three beta, when this card is normal summoner, specific summoner, I can add a level four or lower magnet wire. Him, him, I don't believe it can add Excel, yeah. Uh, magnet wire, except for beta, that's fine. And then I can use the effect once per turn, and then tribute effect, once again, I don't have it, so it's not gonna be done, it's fine. We run two gamma. Uh, I was used to running three, but then I started focusing more on the poly aspect, and then it got kind of cloggy. Like, he's definitely the worst one in the all. When he's normal summon special summon, I can special summon a level four lower magnet wave from my hand. Um, well, that's nice, and it's like, well, you can summon him, and then summon him, and then go into Gorgon Guardian. I got him, and I got him. And I prefer these over this, you know? So, uh, I only need two of them. He gets the job done, you know? Uh, and then if I do choose to summon him, then at least he's here, but I don't need to. I really don't need to. And then this should be a fact, who cares, never did it. All right, we're on one giant century of stone. You will love this card. This card's in graveyard, and all monsters you control are rock types, you get to summon it. So it's like a true one for as long as you control rock type monsters every single turn. And he's 2,000 boo, you just keep summoning him, level three, go into Gorgon and Guardian over and over again. So once you just foolish him, once you put him in the graveyard, Every time you just normal summon a rock, he'll be there for you. So you can just be like, all right, normal summon a Gorgonic Gargoyle, summon this, summon this, summon this, summon this, summon this. Gorgonic Guardian, Gorgonic Guardian, Gorgonic Guardian, Gorgonic Guardian, like, I mean, come on. Just the fact that this deck has level three Earths and you have access to that powerful monster is just awesome. All right, three, Gorgonic Gargoyle. So uh, this card's really good. When I normal summon a rock type monster, I can special this card for my hand. So there'll be often times where I'm just trying to set up. Uh, I summon Alpha, get the search to set up the polyplay, and I'm just like, oh, special summon Gorgonic uh, Gargoyle. There she is. There's that Guardian right there. So, yeah. Uh, I'm probably maybe bad for running three. I see most people running two, but nope, nope, nope. I want, the, I want the play. I want it. I want it. Even if I had to normal summon it and the special summon itself, I'm busting her out. So, let's go. All right. And we're done. Three King of the Swamp. You probably don't need to run this, especially since King of the Swamp cannot be used for this, which sucks. If it can, then I can understand, but no. Oh shit, and that was kind of bars for a second bit low. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's literally there to get poly. Same thing with this. Get me poly. The high consistency. Because I'm running three of this, three of this. Oop, I just deleted something out of the deck on accident. Oh, I deleted a gargoyle. <laughs> Gorgonic. There it is. I accidentally deleted a gargoyle. I'm running three of this, three of this. This can search this. This can go up in this. So. This gets this, so there's a high, high, high chance of getting both the monsters to the poly. So, uh, I was always playtesting, and as it was going past a month, uh, I started increasing it. You know, at first I was running, like, I think I was running, like, none of this, or maybe, like, one of this, one of this, and three of this. But then I wasn't getting poly enough, so I just, like, crank it up to, you know, 1,000. Three of this, three of this, three of this. Make sure I get that poly. And if I dead draw, it sucks, but as long as I have that poly and I have these two, I bust out a Quasar. I mean, if, if that's not, if, if literally, if that is not enough incentive to make sure that you bust out your poly plays, then I don't know what it is. Run triple Prisma. Prisma can't actually work. So you summon Prisma, you go ahead and reveal this, you send one of the two, it becomes that name, and then you can fuse with, with the Prisma because the name is on the field. So yeah, Prisma helps. Prisma helps. And then Rudder for Prisma, Foolish for uh, Giant Century of Stone, really. You know, I was I used to be running that petition, but I ended up taking him out. So you can put him in if you want to, maybe if you want to drop this and Change this around, put in some mathematician stuff for Gaggy, it's for Gaggy. I already said that. Of course, triple twin twisters, pop the back row, uh, poly fusing to this, and then Solemn Brigade. Simple as that. Cookie cutter shit, right? Alright, three. Super Conduction Machine. Imperion Magnum. Alright? A big old condom. Put it on and go in. Alright? Like, it's a quasar, come on. So good, so good. Uh, we have some eights, like like I said, when these cards are moved from the field, then I can summon these two. So these two are both eight, so I can make some rank eight plays. So we have, of course, Hope, which is probably the biggest uh, rank eight monster of Belgrand. He used to be, but now not so much anymore. It kind of just fell off. Uh, we have the Cypher Dragon, and then slap on top the, the full armor. I guess I can go ahead and put Blade in here now, uh, Cypher Blade Dragon, but this is before he was even, you know, around, so yeah. Uh, then we got uh, Brick Sword, probably the big generic rank three. Uh, 
Super Quantum Machine Beast Grand Pulse, pop that back row. Uh, Livrier detached to grab one of these banished monsters with that. Uh, Nightmare Shark to go for game. Ali card to pop, set card, and of course, triple Gargonic Guardian because it's motherfucking Gargonic Guardian. Like, if it was just, if it was this deck to only make Machine Imperion Magnum, I would probably be like, eh. But because it has access to this and this, and there's been times where I bust out both of these on the same turn, it's like, god damn, you know? So, that's pretty powerful. You gotta you got admit that. Overall, pretty fun deck. I enjoyed the time that it was on here. Actually, it was actually one of the few times where uh, I made the deck. Before it was even up on uh, Daily Rules. Like, I was just sitting there thinking about it, and I was just like, I wonder how this would work. I made the deck. I didn't play test it, but I made the deck. And then I happened, it happened to get suggested. I put up on the polls, and I was like, and I mentioned it. I was like, you know, I actually have this deck made if already. So if you guys want to vote for it, and we'll play it. It happened to get voted on, so, you know, it's been tweaked. This isn't the, the version that I originally made. Of course, I threw in much more seconds. I mean... I mean, I think I'm crazy to run Triple King of Swan, Triple Fusion Sage, and Triple Poly, but if your fusion is that fucking good and you're that thirsty for it, then let's go, especially when it's a Quasar. Come on. So, uh, there you go. There's a deck profile for Electromech Warriors. Put down condom on boys. So, I will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be doing the deck profile for what could be a, uh, maybe like a pre-made early, early, early beta, alpha, whatever word is before that, uh, test build a predator plan. So it's, there's only three monsters, no spells, no traps, no nothing, you know? So I got voted on the struggle was a little bit real, so you'll get the deck profile for that, and then I will be tagging tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm playing with Destiny Heroes. Destiny Heroes are going to be interesting because, uh, I made the deck, uh, a little bit more focused around uh, Destiny Hero and Dragon, because he's pretty powerful. He's probably one of the most powerful uh, Destiny Hero monsters that they have. And, uh, you know, I went from this deck, which is kind of thirsty for the fusion, to Destiny Hero and Dragon, which is a little bit thirsty for the fusion. I kind of threw in a little bit of a, a little bit of flair, a little bit of a, a lithium, but, you know, hopefully it won't be too terrible. I mean, for some reason, Konami just hates Destiny Heroes, and they just like to fuck them right in the butt, but... Uh, maybe they'll get some new cards, hopefully. I mean, for freaking Edo being on the damn show, all of this shit is crap. Like, you made the fucking good Ancient Gear shit. Like, why can't you make good Destiny Hero shit? Either you somehow can't, and you're trying to stick to the old cards, which would be poop, and you don't want to, like, take it to the next level, or you're intentionally doing it in Konami, then in that case, you can go fucking eat a dick, because, come on. You know? Either it... Like, there, there's, there's just no decent. Either it's, it's just, like, either... Stupid Destiny Heroes, or like, you know, a banned Destiny Hero, and then, you know, one that was like previously hit. So, you know, there's not too much of just, uh, oh yeah, this card, this card can work, you know? So, I don't know. We'll try, we'll try though. So, uh, if you haven't checked that already, the uh, Daily Duels that deck that will be placing this on Wednesdays already went up, it's Dark Lords, you know? So, hopefully that goes well. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode of Daily Duels. Thanks for watching, thanks for your support. See you guys tomorrow.